confidence on camera. Confidence on camera really starts with you and the confidence for yourself, right? It's all an internal process. So we're going to help you today. And I have a very special guest that I'll be introducing to you here in just a second. Justin Guarini from American Idol, Broadway, Diet Dr. Pepper commercials. He's all over the place. You know his name. So we're going to be talking today about what is confidence exactly? What does it actually mean? because I think we all get a little confused about what that actually means. Uh, we're gonna talk about tips to show up and face your challenges more confidently. And of course, we will have Q&A with Justin, and we are going to dig into this whole conversation Get your notepad out because what Justin has to share today is going to be fantastic. If you're new around here, please do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. And if you are new, then you don't know me. Well, hello, I'm Laria Petrucci from Live Streaming Pros, where I help you create professional live video that is uniquely you. And I love, love, love to help you get that instant credibility and extract your personality so that you're connecting with the right people. All right, so... We actually met on Clubhouse, Justin and I, and um, if, you, if you aren't on Clubhouse, you're missing out on some good stuff, but I decided, hey, we need to, we need to bring this conversation to the public as well, and we've co-hosted a, a couple of rooms together, and the reason that I love Justin so much is he's all about value. His experience that he has had in the past, his life experiences, his career experiences, have really given him a lot of wisdom and insight into what it takes to have what he calls core confidence. So uh, we're going to be diving into all of that. I love, love, love his outlook on life. He has risen to the challenges that he's faced. So what about you? Are you going to rise to the challenges? We're going to help you do that today. Justin in the house, welcome. Hey, how are you? I am fantastic. And I know you are because Ooh. you always are. <laughs> ah, you know, it, it's a lovely snowy day here on the East Coast where I live. Uh, and I just finished up uh, day three of my core confidence challenge. And uh, it was it's just been awesome. It's awesome to be in a group of people who are just like uh, the people here who are just seeking, trying to level up. And I want to thank you for having me on the show. And and I just, it's so nice to be able to like, I, I know your voice so well from Clubhouse, <laughs> but it's so nice to actually not see you just be static on Instagram and, yeah, and right? see your face and, and to just hang out with you for a little bit. And I can't wait to answer questions and just dive into all the wonderful things that you and I both love to talk about when it comes to just being your best self yes. and being you on camera and in life. Yes. So let's do that. Before we dig into these conversations, you mentioned your challenge that's going on right now. Uh, this is the core confidence challenge. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about it? Yes, I do. Look at that. You know, <laughs> I love, I love StreamYard. I use it all the time, but yeah. man, Ecamm, yeah. I've had a couple of people, Frank, Frank Lopes and you are like, look at this, look at that. <laughs> Show me the gorgeousness of all the cool things you can do with I'm gonna, Ecamm. And I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you on Ecamm. Actually, we're streaming. I didn't have a chance to tell you this. This is the last minute oh, yeah. decision. We're streaming to the Ecamm channels right now. Sweet. Well, forget that other company. I'm not <laughs> I really do try. I mean, it's, a, it's an unintentional commercial or Ecamm because I've seen so many awesome things uh, that Ecamm can do. And so I'm, we'll, we'll talk not okay. only about camera angles, but we'll talk about uh, <laughs> We're going to get you all me. snazzed up is what yeah, we're going right. to do. Right. So uh, yeah, the Core Confidence Challenge is uh, a lot of fun and that's the page there. Um, and in the video you see right there, I really talk about what confidence means to me and how I have uh, struggled with just defining confidence for myself and in so doing with all the things that I've done with that singing in front of 30 million people every single week on American Idol or being in six Broadway shows and performing in front of live audiences, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows or showing up on set and being the only one who's on camera as a little sweet and having to like deliver in front of a green screen and with people not around me, you know, the whole thing um, about how I really employ 
and discovered my own unique version of confidence. And so uh, basically what I have started doing is I help uh, entrepreneurs and influencers profit under pressure because what you're doing right now, what I'm doing, what we do uh, every day, whether we, uh, you are a doctor, a lawyer, someone who is an influencer, is that the reason why, it, or a stay-at-home parent, is that we have to learn how to profit under the immense amounts of pressure that we find ourselves in. I mean, look, if 2020 didn't teach us anything and taught us about pressure and what pressure means in our lives and how it can affect our bodies uh, and our relationships and our businesses and our connections. And so what I discovered was something I call core confidence, hence the name core confidence challenge. <laughs> and so uh, what my... core confidence? <laughs> yeah, you know, hey! like literal dm and so uh and so what core confidence is it is the art and science of developing four key skills across four key areas of your body and those skills are clarity uh commitment creativity and certainty and then we marry those up with your body we marry those up with your spirituality we marry those up with your relationships and we marry up with your business and your understanding of money. And when we do that, when we marry those ideas together and you develop those four key skills in each of the four areas, key areas of your body, then you create the foundation of what I call core confidence. And it's that confidence that allows you to move forward and to do more, be more and give more than you ever believed was possible. I love that. We think so, so much alike as we've already discovered, yeah. which is yeah. why you're here. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm happy to be here. Um, so, in five, first of all, as uh, Christopher said, it's so beautiful to witness somebody just being themselves and letting loose. It inspires everyone to do the same. Yes. Totally. Okay, so you talked about finding your own unique version of confidence. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about what confidence is exactly. What does that mean yeah. to you? Sure. Well, I'll tell you by contrasting it against what it is not. Yes. A lot of the things that we see on television or in social media especially is actually cockiness or if you don't like that word, which some people don't, it's bravado, right? Mm -hmm. We yep. see bravado, we see people out there and target and we're like, oh, I wish I had their confidence or I wish I had their money or I wish I had all those things that we wish th that they have that we think that we don't have. And so we see that and we mistake it oftentimes for confidence, but it really is just cockiness or bravado. And what is cockiness or bravado? It is uh, actions, thoughts, behaviors, words w that have the intention of impressing or intimidating. Now, doesn't that clarify things a little bit? When you think back of that confident person, you know, and they're like, rah, 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 a lot of marketers, right? A lot of yeah. bro marketers, hey, right? Look at, my, yeah. look at my Lamborghini. Look at my, uh, look at my plan. It's <laughs> the plan. Uh, look like, at my plan. And it's like, oh, right? Ugh. It's to intimidate, right? Yes. Intimidate or impress. Now, what is confidence on the other hand? Confidence can look somewhat the same, but it has a whole different energy to it. Whereas cockiness and bravado actually has an, a repellent energy, which is why you're like three, two, one, oh, skip on a lot of those bro marketing commercials, right? On, on yeah. YouTube and around, you're like, ah, as soon as you can, because it is a repellent energy. It makes us want to get away from them. Whereas confidence is actually an energy that draws you in and draws people into your life and good events into your life because confidence is that quiet energy that recognizes, that helps us to recognize our own self-worth, our own value. We recognize that we have, and it, it just aligns so beautifully with what it is that you teach as well. We recognize that we have a unique value and gift to give to the world. Yes. And we, when we can sit in that comfortably and sit, it's almost like sitting in the eye of a hurricane where it's like all these things can rage around you. And yet you have this place of peace within you that says, I am who I am. Yeah. I love who I love. I have the body that I have. I have I the relationship with the business, <laughs> right? We all do. 
<laughs> you look, I mean, I, I have, cannot tell you how many times I have to catch myself and there's an awareness factor here. Mm-hmm. I have to catch myself when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, oh. I'm not, oh, I don't have enough of, oh. <laughs> like, right? and I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I can either just continue to like bonk myself over the head with this thought that doesn't serve me, or I can find the value in it and recognize from a place of confidence that like, oh, that thought is just me. It's like, you know, bless the haters, bless those negative thoughts because they are like, here's what you really want. If we just extract the gold from it, oh, I just, I, I want to feel better about myself. And so instead of just being like, oh, I don't have enough of, oh, or I don't, oh, like my ad, oh, like whatever. It's like, oh, I can do something about that. I can just do like five sit ups and then for a week and then do 10 the next week. You know what I mean? Like whatever yeah. it is. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, so, um, uh, it, it's just, it, it's amazing what you can find when you begin to invest in yes. awareness, invest in confidence and invest in that quiet self-worth. Um, and, and it's, it becomes, it becomes that sort of energy that attracts people and great things into your life. It's that energy that when you get on the fr- the phone with your best friend and you're like, and you look up and you're like, oh my gosh, it's two hours have gone by. Uh, yeah. And you're like, what? Like, that's just two people who are confidently sitting in relation to one another and yeah. and I love that energy. So you there's so so much to extract there. You guys I, I told right? <laughs> like where do I even start? Yeah. Um, you guys I told you you wanted a pen and paper for this discussion. And you know when we talk about um when we talk about confidence and, and I, you know, I, you're here most likely to think about confidence on camera because mm-hmm. that's what we talk about at live streaming pros. But like I said at the beginning, confidence on camera can't be really had until you can find some semblance of confidence in yourself. So mm-hmm. it's, it's the first step. And so that's a really important thing to realize. Dr. Ela says, I extracted gold from Clubhouse. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's billions of dollars oh. worth of gold inside of Clubhouse. Like hundreds yes. of millions of dollars worth of free coaching are basically happening yeah. every single day. That alone. Totally. So. Get on there if you're not on there. And speaking of Clubhouse, and, and my audience uh, has a going ticker on how many times I say Clubhouse in a single <laughs> video. Um, <Yeah>. but <laughs> I'm a little obsessed. But yeah. um, speaking of Clubhouse, and I, I spoke about this in one of your rooms uh, about my definition of confidence. And mm-hmm. I think that it really, I told a story and I won't go into that here, but I think it really boils down to determination. So when Mm. you're facing a challenge, as we all know around here, challenges are opportunities for growth. But when you are facing that challenge or that opportunity, the determination to step on the other side of the uncomfortable is really all that you need to be confident or to feel confident. Because when you do, you're ignoring the um, I can't do this syndrome, you know, the imposter mm-hmm. syndrome, you're ignoring mm-hmm. all of the mental games that just like, oh, oh no, that, that's, that's what happened. That, uh, the, hold on. This is lamb. Hold on. I have to do that again. This what? is, <laughs> this is what? lamb, the, the live adrenaline monster, right? <laughs> He's the little guy telling you all of the things in your head that things are going to go wrong, all of that stuff. Right. And yeah. so when you're able to say, you know what, I don't, I, I feel the way I feel. I acknowledge the way I feel, but yet I am determined to step into that challenge, that opportunity, and do the things that I need and want to do, regardless of how I feel. That's really all it takes. And that is, I used to, I used to you think of it as a flip of a switch in my brain that I could just mm-hmm. switch on and off. Um, well, never really off. Why, why turn it off? But I, I, I realized it's not, it's not a switch in your brain. It's just determination. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, brilliant. I mean, there's so much to just unpack right there. And what you call determination, um, I call just commitment. Same thing. Yes, exactly. Just different totally. language, right? It's and and what I really yeah. love about Clubhouse and, you know, when you come and you share in a room that I'm in and we're in a room together is that we're all saying the same things, but we're saying them in a way that mm-hmm. might serve yes. different people, right? It's like modalities, yeah. right? Some people are visual learners. Some people like are auditory learners, some, but, right? And so 
what I love is about how how much you are willing to give value on Clubhouse, the fact that you have invited me here and are sharing uh, my message with your audience is just that it, it's a, it's avoiding scarcity mindset, right? It's like, wait, you and I can work together till the end of time and never run out <laughs> yes. of people to serve because yes. right? people will always as time goes on there's always going to be somebody who doesn't have the confidence to be on camera that they could or should or would right there's somebody who doesn't have the confidence to be in the relationship that they want to be in or have the body they want to and it's just like when you like you said have that determination to move forward to expand and to grow those voices don't go away that little red guy doesn't ever go away he pops up yeah. or she pops up Absolutely. or the non-binary version of that animal pops up and they're there. But you just say, okay, and you pet it on the head and you move forward. And I yeah. love I love that. You're absolutely right. Determination and commitment is what separates people who want something bigger, better uh, from the people who end up creating it, having it, making it and doing it. Exactly. Um, let's talk about being uniquely you, as I always do. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. I, I did a little internet stalking last night. Um, <laughs> to, oh, to, no. To <laughs> I thought I had it scrubbed. I, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> I, I needed, I, I was looking for some stories to pull from and, and some examples, right? And so I was, uh, I was thinking, um, I, or I, I found an interview where you, with you with Kelly Clarkson, of course, um, mm -hmm. and you were talking about your Diet Dr. Pepper commercial audition. Um, yeah. And I would, I think that's so awesome. So I want you to tell the story. Oh, but yeah. what I want yeah. you guys to hear in this story is that he was just being himself, uh, which is hard to do in life, but going into an audition for a company that big, like that's even harder. So I would love for you to tell the story and extract, like, how did you show up and just yeah. be yourself? Yeah. Uh, when people say just be yourself, that's like, I, mean, I, so, I hate that term, what? even though I just you used do. it. You're like, <laughs> it's what? like, what does that even mean? Exactly. What does that <laughs> even mean? That's it. And so uh, take you to the story. So for about nine months, I was in uh, a Broadway show called Wicked. And I was playing Fierro, um, one of the male leads. And I was in pain because even though we do it three hours uh, a night and she was the three hour tour of that show, um, just the repeated stress injuries of swinging out on a rope and dancing and doing the things just was really hard on my body. So I was like done. At the end of my nine month contract, I was like, thank you very much. I'm going to go here in the fourth quarter and enjoy my holiday. And so I get this call uh, from my agent about this commercial. And I read it and I'm like, I don't look like that, sound like that, act like that, and I'm exhausted. I, I live in Pennsylvania here and it is a five hour round trip just to go from my door to New York. And if I got back on the train and went back, that would just be five hours in and of itself. And so I was like, nah, dunzo. And uh, so my agent's like, all right, great, yeah. Then my manager at the time calls me up and she's like, did you turn down this audition? And I was like, yes, it doesn't make any sense. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and, uh, and she's like, you need to go in and do this. I was like, no, I don't. No, <laughs> and she says you really need to go and do this i said no she said yes i said no she said yes she said, i said no she said yes and i said fuck well go and do it and so oh celebrities so difficult right, to deal know, with right, oh. right, right. they're just like us celebrities are just like us and uh so i go and i get on the train bitter betty on the train and i'm just like okay i'm gonna do this just 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 say i did it I walk in the room and if you've ever been in a casting room, you know or you notice that when you walk in, usually they audition the same character at the same time and you walk into the room and you're like, huh, you see somewhat slightly different versions of yourself. Yep, I've been there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, so, yeah, yeah. it's so it wild a, to like be like, I 
am, yeah. it's all me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's this funny uh, moment in Friends when Joey Tribbiani goes into the casting office and he's got the black jacket and the black turtleneck on and everyone else has a black jacket and a black turtleneck on and he's just sitting there like this. Oh, it's just, so it is so, it, it, they even have a, 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 a gif or a gif, however you want to pronounce it, about that. So anyway, I go in there and I'm just like, <laughs> It wasn't that. It was all these people who look nothing like me, but all kind of look similar to themselves. And I'm thinking, oh, why am I here? Uh, and then I look over the sides um, and I see that it's all these 80s rock stars that I don't look like or sound like. And I'm like, okay. So one of the greatest things that I learned about auditioning and life in general was I walked into the room and I didn't care. Now, I cared about doing a good job and being the best that I could be, right? Because in the audition game, just like in the um, uh, hiring game or the uh, application for a job game, you want to put your best foot forward, right? Even if you don't get the gig, maybe they'll think you of you for something else or another time. So I go in there and I, I stopped myself from caring about the outcome. Key, caring about the outcome, right? Yeah. And so I cared about doing a good job. I just didn't care about the outcome. Yeah. It didn't bother me. I did not attach my identity, my self-worth, any of that to the outcome. And that if goes for anything. anything in life. Anything in life. When you can detach from that, you're going to just be okay with whatever happens. Yeah. Because whatever happens is going to be happening, right? And whatever's happened, going to happen is what's supposed to happen. And you begin to extricate yourself and that energy that you put into oh, worrying about the outcome, oh, you know, right? What if, what if, what if, which we have no control over. And so when I did that, I recognized not at the time, but later on, I recognized that so much of that energy, almost like diverting a river, went back into my creativity and my unique unis, my, my, my unique meanness, which butchers your phrase, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I tried. I tried. That's it. I'll be here for the next, uh, next 20 minutes. So um, that being said, I do it. I go in and they had all the, the uh, uh, side lyrics. They had all of the word sides up on LCD monitors. So I didn't have to really memorize anything and what i did was i said okay i'm a not going to care about the outcome b i'm just gonna have fun right and they gave me this like cheap sequin jacket that like you get at like party city usa and like a muffle this scarf and I, and I just said to him all right hey um all right i looked on there and it said little sweet slides in on his knees and i was like <laughs> i'm here I'm not getting this gig. I might as well have fun. So I said to the casting associate, I was like, am I out of the frame? He was like, no. He said, am I out of the frame now? No. He's like, am I out of the frame now? Yeah, great. And so he said, anytime you're ready. And so I said, great. And I just came in and I was like, this sweet sitting in on his knees. Oh, and like just having a ridiculous, like doing the most ridiculous things. That None of that was supposed to be sung I was singing things and doing the kind of stuff you want to talk about just being uniquely myself, doing the things that I would do for my wife and our children when they were grumpy and or mad at me or whatever to make them laugh or smile and have a good time, right? Like, and mm -hmm. I just started experimenting and have a good time and boom, it was over. It was done. Got no feedback. And I just took the jacket <laughs> off. And they were probably like, like looking at you. Yeah, right. Well, I, I didn't care. I did not care. And so I was just like, done, holiday, here I come. Thank you very much. Get back on the train, two and a half hours back uh, of my life, getting back to my home here in Pennsylvania. And then my manager calls me that night and she says, hey, um, they want you on the train. They want you back tomorrow morning oh, no. to meet with the director. And I was like, oh. And my wife was like, I hate you. <laughs> because she had been for nine months mostly at home uh, yeah. during like the really difficult times of parenting which is like that that like 2 a.m to like oh. past bedtime right or 2 a.m 2 p.m to like past past bedtime like and so she'd been doing that by herself and so she's like I can't, you're going what are you doing because i was like i'm home i'm home now i can take <laughs> care of babe please don't be mad at me and uh and so <laughs> i get back on the the train and I go and I go back into the room and again I'm just like there's no way I'm getting this because I see in the holding area 
this guy with the pencil thin mustache and the thing and like who's a dead ringer for Prince and a bunch of these other 80s rock stars, right? And I'm like, that's the guy. They're just bringing me into like contrast to compare in their evil producer way. And so I went in and I was like, hey, I had a good time. And I, 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 there wasn't even a human in the room except for the person operating the camera. Everyone was, the director was in Spain. So we were doing a sort of thing like this. Um, the director was in Spain, the uh, Dr. Pepper um, uh, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, which was Dr. Pepper Snap at the time, was in uh, Texas. And the ad agency was in California. And here I was in New York. We had this nice you know, string of, uh, of pearls going across the globe. And so they put me through my paces and I'm having a good time and I'm singing things and doing it faster and just being a general idiot. And they said, okay, thanks so much. And uh, I was like, vacation, here I come. <laughs> and then I go back on the train two and a half hours. And, and to put a bow on the story, my uh, uh, rep at the time called me and she said, <laughs> it, was a, it was a Thursday. And she said, um, pack a bag because they want you on a plane tomorrow to be in Los Angeles to do fittings uh friday saturday sunday and then monday they're gonna start filming and so uh, i was like okay honey i've got to go uh -oh. on, on the flight and so sorry. yeah sorry and so six years later uh i've i've been doing it pretty much every single year with the exception of, of 2020 oh, wow. um and it has been one of the greatest most fun things and it all came down to that whole long story it came down to letting go of my identity and the value and the worth that I placed on myself around the outcome and just, can, can you pop that phrase up again? That, oh, that beautiful the, thing? this one? Wait, yeah, hold on, you're, you're muted. There you go. <laughs> yes, that being one. uniquely you. The whole idea of being uniquely you, I, I, I walked in yeah. and I was uniquely me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, yep. right? And it, yeah, and, I have trouble with that phrasing awesome. as well. I'm always like, uniquely me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me, 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 myself. Me, me, yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 just, it just goes to show you um, that when you let go of the outcome and your identity, and when you disentangle your identity from yeah. outcomes, whether it's in your body, spirituality, relationships, business, is when you free yourself up to be uniquely you. For sure. I love that. And lots of great comments coming through. Thank you guys so much for uh, chiming in, for asking the questions. We're going to tackle Q&A here shortly. But before yeah. we do, if you guys love what Justin is dropping, uh, you have access to his challenge right there. <laughs> um, and uh, that is actually ongoing right now. So you're going to have to play a little bit of catch up. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's totally okay. I was uh, watching his uh, stream this morning about that, that was in the challenge, and I love the approach that he's taking to this. So if you want to spend more time on these topics, his challenge is a great place to do that. And I will say this, you all keep asking for Lita early. Lita is my 30-day live video challenge uh, to be confident okay. on camera. And that's happened. It's live every day in April and August. And so everybody's like, when, 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 is, when do we get to do it? When do we get to do it? So you guys, you have to wait till April. Uh, so now is your chance to start that process in Justin's challenge right now, okay? Yeah. Yes. This Thank is you your... very much. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. And so I'm sorry to, to, to step on you there because yeah. I know there was a beautiful challenge. There was a beautiful comment there. Did I step on that? Oh, I was I just going to say, this is your race. No one else is in this race other than you from CK. Absolutely. And uh, I like to tell long stories. And so I want to <laughs> let you know that I am here to answer questions. And so uh, don't don't stress on time, Luria. Okay. <laughs> I, I do want to be conscious of that. But thank you for saying that. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk, uh, before we get to questions, um, mm -hmm. I want to know what issues you face now, because you, I mean, backing up, I'm sure that when you hit the American Idol stage, mm -hmm. uh, you had had some experience of some kind, I'm sure. Ooh, a lot. A lot. Okay. So what was that experience like? Um, I, and I talked what, about what it What did you bit. do? Yeah. Oh, when I talked about it today. So I have from as far back as I can remember, been exposed to lights, cameras, action. My mother mm -hmm. was one of the first 200 people to start up CNN. 
Um, oh, she was okay. an anchor woman on CNN. My dad was a politician in Atlanta, became the first African-American police chief uh, down there. And so when it came to politics and lights and cameras and then uh, being a Southern child of my generation, being seen and not heard was an imperative. And so I learned how to manage myself quite well around all of those things. Yeah. And then moving forward in choirs, moving forward in touring around the country um, and in plays. And um, one of the greatest jobs I ever had um, was working for a bar and bat mitzvah company called Cutting Edge DJs here in Pennsylvania. And I had to, among other things, entertain 13 year olds that came from uh, well healed families. And so 13 year olds are hard audience just in general, but then oh, you yeah. take money 13 year olds and then that's a whole nother thing. But I also had to deal in and and have fun with the bubblas and like make sure that the parents could go off and, and have a drink at the party they spent thirty forty thousand dollars on and those things. So just management of people, management of uh, stage presence um, throughout my um, life set me up mm -hmm. for everything that has happened to me over the past almost 20 years on American Idol. But surely you still felt with that stage a little bit uncomfortable, uh, maybe nervous. Uh, you had some kind of uh, confidence issues then. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you've, you've taught yourself how to get over that. You've looked at the core confidence, those four yeah. pillars, right? The four. Um, yeah. And so but now, like, you've gone through all of these experiences, yeah. Broadway, mm -hmm. everything, being on huge stages. So what now do you deal with? What issues do you deal with with behind that exterior uh, confident? Sure. That exterior confidence. That confident exterior. That's, yeah. that, that's what I was go. trying to say. Ooh, 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 we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, one of the biggest challenges that I deal with and again, when you think about that, where's that little red guy? Is that little red oh, guy right, around here? Right here. Where's that little, is he right there? There he is. <laughs> he never goes away. Ah, let's see you, pal. It's that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wrong way. There, there, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what I do with every day. Yeah. In terms of being a mentor and a coach and someone who, uh, gives and serves others it's that imposter syndrome i don't buy into it and just within three days of launching this challenge as i'm sure you can attest to as well with all of the the leader that you do um you begin to be like oh oh yeah i can do this oh i do have value clubhouse right yes. i will never forget hitting the unmute button on clubhouse and clicker clicker two more clubhouse references um like <laughs> And like literally being like, I've been in front of 30 million people and yet not even being seen. I could have been standing there in, in, you know, pink polka dot underwear. And yet it was more nerve wracking to just have my voice heard in one of those rooms yes. that I'm had a thousand feel. people, just a thousand people listening yeah. than it was to stand on a stage in the same place where they have the Oscars and have 50 million people watch me. And so that is that imposter syndrome is the big challenge for me, but it is in the doing, the commitment, the putting one foot in front of the other that I recognize and I prove to myself that what I do have has value yeah. and I do have the ability to serve a great deal of people. In fact, I think it was my room on imposter syndrome where we met, right? Wasn't it? Uh, you may likely. not remember. Yeah, I think I, I think it was. Yeah, because I was I, yeah. I was feeling that same way, right? Uh, he, uh, that like clubhouse is like I've been doing this for fifteen years, putting myself out there, and all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to think? Yeah. What happens if I say something wrong? Or like, just stupid? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm just saying everything's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So everybody's like loving what you're sharing. Um, right. of course. So let's talk about, well, let's answer some questions. Um, and then I want to wrap up with some tips on being confident on camera specifically. Sure. Uh, so that's coming guys. Stay tuned. Uh, first question comes from Laura. What do you do about sensitivity to criticism? Mm. I, I mean, 
That's good. We've all dealt you know, with it, right? Yeah. Uh, the way I love to think about that and what has kept me centered, especially being from uh, uh, getting, I guess, my big break in the industry on a show where you are being judged, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right? Talk and about then, criticism. And, then, <laughs> yeah, uh, and like when it comes to like auditioning, which is what I was doing before then in the in the entertainment industry, it's like you're constantly yeah. walking in and being like, and like people are just sometimes harshly judging you is remembering that they, first of all, think constructive criticism. If somebody's just going to hate on you, then they're just going to hate on you and you kind of got to do your best to, to be okay. Fine. Thanks. Thanks. But no thanks. And not identify with the opinions of others. Easily said, but not as easily done. But what's something that has helped me when it comes to even constructive criticism and like looking at reviews is I'm never, I never feel like I'm quite as good as the people say I am, but I'm also never as bad as they say I am. And that allows me to reside in the space of like, okay, how do I feel about me? And how can I listen to the negative critiques and say, where is there gold or something that I can take from that that serves me? And if it's if it's, oh, I'm terrible, I'm a bad person, I'm all these, then that's not it. You're taking the lead out of that. But there is something to be said, bless the haters, bless those negative thoughts, because if you can dig into them, there's gold there. And then where are those wonderful things that I can look at at the positive? And where can I extrapolate and take from that? And how can I avoid, again, you don't want to have the identify identification with negative but i also don't want to have too much of the identification with the positive too because then i begin to live and die on people or not right yes yeah so it's that balance so that's how you you reduce your sensitivity by really looking inward and being careful about how you identify with the good or the bad I love that. And I'll go back to the whole like room in an audition where everybody looks like you conversation that we were having earlier. For me, it wasn't acting, it was modeling, but it was, uh, I realized that criticism isn't about me um, Mm -hmm. in those cattle calls. Like they're, they're called cattle calls guys because everyone, like we were saying, is the same. It's like, just like dump a whole bunch of people in one room. (laughs) <laughs> and then pick them apart yeah. and choose a single person out of that hundreds of people, right? Um, and I realized that, you know, when I looked out around the room um, during these cattle calls, I was just like brown hair, brown brown eyes, same body shape, blah, blah, blah. Like, and then how do they choose? Well, there's just something. Maybe they like their hair better, like like shorter or longer, or maybe they like the personality, or maybe they like something else. Like, there's literally nothing about that experience that, at first I was like, oh my God, like, I hate myself out of (laughs) this experience, right? But then I realized, it's not about me. It's really not, like, their criticism of me by declining to hire me is not about me. It's about something individual, a little thing that they want that I just don't have. Like, and that's okay. You know, so that's kind of how I started uh, absorbing, not absorbing criticism, but um, learning to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you so much, yeah. Anar, for the super sticker. Appreciate you. <laughs> that what was... is that? So on YouTube, you can do super chats or super stickers. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? No. And so when we get a super chat, ever, somebody give us a super chat just to show Justin how this works. <laughs> what is Usually, a super chat? It's like a donation. Um, and so oh, that's yeah, on YouTube, they can like do a five bucks, 10 bucks. Sometimes oh, we get a hundred bucks or whatever they feel like doing uh, because they Thank like the content. You. Yeah. Thank you. That's so great. Thank you so much for supporting Lori and all she does. That's awesome. Well, it's because of you, Justin. No, let's be honest. It's because of we. It's because <laughs> of all of us. <laughs> but what's cool is that when we get a super chat, it pops up that alert. Um, and oh, no wonder, because I heard this. Yay! And yeah. I was like, well, did you see? Know. Did you see my dog? My Wait. children. Yeah, my children need. Them. Here we go. Here comes another one. Abby is Abby is my dog. She's gonna pop up here on the camera. 
We're doing a little uh, YouTube tutorial here. <laughs> it, it takes a second, but yeah, it'll it'll come up here in a second. Um, and that's like a, a little animated GIF. It just is a fun little engagement <laughs> thing for people. <laughs> we thanks to Christopher as well. <laughs> and also picture me uh, <laughs> you guys are uh, awesome thank you so much okay <laughs> so next question shall we um yeah. times masquerade if you believe in your content then <laughs> then being uh, you know what stephanie you, you remember stephanie from our from our clubhouse conversations right yeah, stephanie Luke. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. when she was on here she was constantly like petting the the suit the uh, abby <laughs> That's amazing. It was so cute. I'm going to do that if it comes up again. Okay. <laughs> yep, coming up soon from Elaine. Thank you. Um, okay, so if you believe in your content, then being authentic should Yay. follow, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Love you. <laughs> um, yeah, you should. Being authentic is a part of, you can't have belief without authenticity. I mean, right. really. Yeah, I think you. I think you answered See, your. Own. Sometimes, sometimes they like to like just destroy the show <laughs> with their that's super right, chats. They that's get into this like, fun. let's just Do make everything <laughs> go crazy. Hey, look, I mean, like, destroy the show or build up the show. I mean, my <laughs> so um, yeah, I, of course, yes, that belief factor. That's that's what we would call certainty in the core confidence world, right? When yeah. you have clarity and like you again believing in your message requires clarity believing in your message requires the commitment to keep putting your message out there one of the biggest mistakes that people who are providing a service or a product do is they send an email out and they're like oh nobody responded to my one email and they don't take into account that we all have 60,000 people corporations who spend hundreds of millions of dollars trying to get our attention and our business. And you've got to tap people on the shoulder multiple times, seven at the very least usually, in order for them to even swivel their head in their direction, much less, much less part with some money. So uh, um, that being said, you have the clarity of focus on your message. You have the commitment to putting your message out there. You are finding a creative way to do it. And those three then begin to, based on the results and the refinement and the doing of it, that commitment that Luria was speaking to, will then give you the certainty and give you that more belief and trust in your message. And it is it, it, what I would really encourage all of you to do is to let go of the idea and the concept that there is a finish line. You will do yourself a major favor, right? Any area of expansion, any part of your life, body, your spirituality, your relationships, your business, let go of the finish line because it is a never ending uh, um, experience of expansion. And when you let go of that, oh, if I get to this place, then I will be okay, then, I will love myself, then my business will be good. Because it doesn't happen. Because when you get to that place, you have expanded to the point that opens up your field of vision to be able to see all the other possibilities that you couldn't see when you were back down in the foothills. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I hope that answered your question. I, yes, they, they said thank you. Okay, so Nadim said, do you write what to, do you, uh, write what you say, like a script, or do you do bullet points? Do you use a prompter? How do you both. prepare? Both. Both, both, both. Um, when I am in, for example, my core confidence challenge, for the first two days, I really like scripted it all out because I wanted to, because I can be like, <laughs> like and, it, and that's what it feels like after a time. And so I really wanted to be laser focused because I respect people's time and, and I wanted to make sure to get all of my points in um, because otherwise we'll um, use Chatty Cathy all day long. Um, and so that was important for me to make sure that people understood core concepts and all that uh, of core confidence. And yes, so the answer is, Yes. Sometimes I will bullet point things because I know my story. I know. But again, it's, just, it's I've, I've worked this message enough and facets of this message um, that uh, I I can use yeah. bullet points. But I love my teleprompter. 
I love it. It keeps me focused and I have it. It's sitting in my thing right now. As a matter of fact, I go like this. I go like this. I'll show you the phone that has the app on it. Oh, oh so you're using oh. a Bluetooth prompter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I I'm not a big fan. Little thing. Okay. Here's nice. my little. Which, uh, which uh, uh, model is that? Which brand? Uh, that's a Satechi. Okay. AKA a cheap. Um, a Bluetooth controller. No offense to the uh, Satechi Corporation. Uh, but yeah, just just like literal Amazon Bluetooth controller. And then I okay. got uh, the teleprompter app on the okay. iPhone. Got it. Super, super simple, super easy. I can't wait to upgrade to some of the wonderful things that you are going to hit me to. I have no doubt, Larry. Um, by the way, I want to make sure... Uh, um, uh, hold on. Sorry. Somebody said I. Somebody said something about name spelling, like to fix the name spelling. I got his name right, right? Like. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> huh. Calendars. Okay. Com. Just... Yeah. okay. Um, Caption. anyway, oh, it's captions. 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 Oh, That's captions. Okay. okay. I miss. I misread that then. <laughs> Out of our control. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, when it comes to teleprompters, remember that Justin and myself. You know, you guys see me with my prompter as well. Remember that we have a lot of experience reading from a prompter. I don't recommend to you all starting out with reading a prompter, especially live. Like, do not rely on that. Uh, while Justin may, he can because he has the experience and he has the ability to do so without it seeming like he's reading. Um, so please don't follow suit. Do as I say. Don't as, don't do as we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I will say this. Look, I've spent a lot of times on red carpets yeah. um, doing interviews and things like that where I've got to be like, and here we're at the 65th Annual Academy Awards. And, blah, 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 and then I'll go interview somebody that has a prompter. But yeah. what I love about the teleprompter and, and A – absolutely right please do not rely on the prompter get your message right get the feel and your voice right and do it live i dare you as a matter of fact one of my mentors told me the other day he's like um what i want you to do is i want you to go and i want you to get your story whatever your story is and i want you to go on live and tell it make it under five minutes or five minutes or about and then I want you to watch it all the way through and think of one thing. We're getting to the the, the tips about Yeah, yeah, go for it. Think of the think of the one thing that you could change, right? And then erase it. And I know for some of us, especially those of us who are in the millennial, which I'm not, but those of us who are in the millennial that, that like or Gen Z, like the idea of putting something on and erasing it is like, <laughs> like a big deal, right? Don't worry. There's a point, there's a madness, to yes. the method to my madness. And so erase it and then go back and do it again, fixing that one thing and then leave it. And then do that over and over again. That is a wonderful way to be able, able to live because we'll spend hours editing and trying to perfect. But in order to do it live, get that feeling, get the sound of your voice the, or the your voice, the larger thing, uh, down. And then... You know, try reading some books out loud. Yes. Right? Some, some fun books, tips. right? That's a great yeah. way to practice. And then when you do that, then you can begin to read a teleprompter and um, uh, use the sort of vocal and because you're just storytelling, yeah. really. And using vocal inflections and, and all of that stuff will start to come to you more naturally. Uh, and I love the prompt because I can read it and then just kind of go off and then I have a, an anchor to come back to. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what I use it for as well. And uh, mm -hmm. also looking away from the, that prompter is very helpful while reading. Move your eyes because you naturally move your eyes. Uh, you don't yeah. just stare it down because that would yeah. be really, really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kayla, or sorry, El Elaine says, are you still staring? Oh, <laughs> it looked like you were still staring out of the, back, the corner of my eye. Uh, DJ Strig does this masterfully. How do you balance confidence without appearing to be all-knowing authority of all things? Mm -hmm. Great question. Well, confidence in and of itself is not that. <laughs> that is more on the side of cockiness or bravado. Confidence is just being able to, again, 
recognize your own worth, recognize your value. Um, and it is more quiet than anything else. And so when you come from a place of that quiet confidence or just recognizing your own self-worth or your value, then you remove the barriers that keep you from recognizing, oh, I'm talking too much. Like even, you know, I, I, I will joke with myself and, and with Luria and be like, I'm just, I, feel, I, I begin to get that feeling like, okay, talking sound bites, you know, those things, it, it, but, yeah. but, and even so, cause I want to, I always want to give so much. It's out of a desire to give that I will just like flap my gums at you. But at the same time, when you have that confidence and you recognize your own value, then thoughts of being all knowing and both that, that it, it, it is, it is unnatural and it feels unnatural. So when you start to feel that unnatural feeling, then you begin to, oh, okay, here are my boundaries. And I could say something, but there I'm in a room of other people who might say it as well. And, you know, maybe I can pull that person aside and have a direct conversation with them in a breakout room if we're talking about in the in the virtual world or whatever. And so you begin to create your own parameters around what is or, or is not um, that sort of all-knowing, all the all right? You begin yeah. to feel that energy. And along with what you just said with, you know, bringing other people or allowing other people mm -hmm. to speak, you guys see, Elaine, you see this in action right here on this show all the time. I'm confident. Everybody tells me I'm, I seem so confident. I can't, they can't imagine I have any issues, blah, 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 right? <laughs> um, but I seem confident, but at the same time, I bring y'all in as a community. The other day I was messing with a piece of gear and I wanted to shortcut my learning experience. So I was like, hey, who uses this? Let, bring them on. They came in on the interview and uh, we talked about it. They told me what buttons to press and shortcut it, right? And, and, and also it, it, it provided a space for you all to provide that information as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never, ever, ever around here say like, I know it all. And so it's just about how you approach life, really, at the end of the day. Uh, do you act as if you know it all? Well, that's what you said, like arrogance, right? But mm -hmm. you don't have to act like that. So if the, here's the thing, and I said this in your chat, and you had a good response to it. Um, but if you are concerned about being vain, about being, you know, acting as if you are way too confident or arrogant. If you're asking these questions, I can tell you with almost 100% certainty, you're not going to actually come across that way to other people because you're coming from a place of humility already. Yeah. My awareness. Of awareness. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, one, a couple... Final questions, and then we'll wrap this up with a last tip from you. Uh, Bez yeah. says, how do you balance being a corporate persona that you may have been told what they're looking for, like do this, I want you to be this person, mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. being yourself? Um, I will liken this, and it's so funny. I love these questions because you help me to hone my own message. Again, yeah. this is we're talking about this confidence, right? I, just to touch very briefly, the not knowing, the not being perfect, the not having it all together is so beautiful. And people respond and relate to that as opposed to the, oh, <laughs> the guy smiley, <laughs> nothing is wrong. And, and, and so that part of confidence and that not, not even being confident and being able to put yourself out there uh, is is gorgeous and it is an attractive energy that people can relate to. But when it comes to uh, what uh, you just asked me, Luria, um, I was in the show Wicked on Broadway for nine months and I played the character Fiero, which um, many, well, about 12 or some odd other actors have played throughout the years. And it is a very set role. They know what they want and uh, they at times because i have a bit of a different energy i have a really playful energy on stage in life and uh they wanted him to be this like you know, prince who's kind of like not affected by things his energy is very much you know on the back foot and just sort of like let life come to him sort of thing whereas my natural tendency is like hello how are you um and 
So what I would do is I would be doing things that were Justin in the role and they would kind of be like, nope, we need this. Nope, we need that. Nope, we need that. And, and they would kind of box and curtail me in. And so what I would do, and, and maybe this might help you as well, is I would just be like, kind of like the raptors in Jurassic Park, you know? I'd just zzz, test that part of the fence over there and I'd give them what they want and, you know, do what I would do and be in Fierro and then zzz, test that little fence over. <laughs> and so it's just very slowly just testing different i mean don't go too far you get you fired but like, you know, yeah. like you just kinda, every once in a while you test the fences like the raptors did in jurassic park and you see where the weakness is in their corporate game mm. is right and then like maybe you yeah you test a little fence over here and somebody in your department was like i really love that you did that again test don't go crazy <laughs> but like te- and then you begin to build the proof and the evidence that will support you being more you. And you might get zapped like heck from uh, uh, one of your tests, right? And then you say, oh, that's not, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's not favorable for me. And so again, it's just very strategically, just, just testing the fences. And eventually you'll be able to prove that who you are and behaving as you are um, really is a benefit to uh, the corporation or situation that you're in. That's really good. You guys are taking notes this whole time, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to end with here shortly with a final tip about being co- about being more confident on camera specifically from mm-hmm. Justin. But before we do, if you, I, I, we didn't get to all the questions and I apologize for that. Uh, but if you do have more questions, well, the opportunity is right there. Gosh darn it, I always get it wrong for you to dive into uh, all of these conversations as well. He has a Facebook group with his Core Confidence Challenge, uh, and it is a perfect starting point while you're waiting on Lita to come in April because we've got a couple months still. So now is your chance to be gain that confidence, not just on camera, but internally in the mindset, all of that. So uh, if you, yeah, if we didn't get your questions, I apologize, but head on into to his challenge, take that opportunity to absorb more. Uh, what's the one final tip that you have about being confident on camera, Justin? My goodness, we've covered so much here. And I'm so grateful that you invited me on to just come and, and share this space with you and, and share camera confidence. Whenever I've been on camera and... I, Again, it goes back to something you said early on. You can teach techniques, you can teach certain tricks, but at the end of the day, the camera really sees all. The camera is the objective observer. And the camera is going to, like fame, not change what's going on in your life. The camera, like fame, is going to magnify that which is happening. There was a, a question that I'm, I'm not going to answer, but I'm just going to touch on a little bit in terms of how do you go on and go live when you're dealing with mental, physical, emotional pain. And in today's world, if anything, <laughs> yeah, hello. We all have. We all have. Sometimes, you know, and there's something to be said for performers or performance life where you have your like the CIA, you have compartments, yeah. right? You gotta put this <laughs> over, you, you just have to put it aside. And there, there, there's a, 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 a facet of confidence to that, really. But that's a whole other story. But I will say this, you know, uh, fame and the camera just magnify what's going on in your life. So what you can do, always be of the mindset that I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna put myself in the right frame if you will, before I get on live or I get on the camera, right? I could have come in and just be bedraggled as all hell, but I think, okay, what's going to pick me up? A little cup of coffee and maybe some jumping jacks, or I'm going to go pet my cat or my dog for a little bit, whatever that may be for you. It would be three dogs for me. Uh, You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to do a little (laughs) dance, like whatever. You can completely 
uh, you know, it's like motion creates emotion yes. and you can set yourself up in a completely new frame. So what I, I guess that's my, my, my tip then be, just remember that the camera magnifies what's going on in your life and you have the ability to control from moment to moment that which is going on in your life from your emotional, physical, mental standpoint, right? So make sure to always put yourself in the frame that you want to uh, um, put across, right? So get yourself moving, do a little dance, do a little something silly. If you're feeling crazy, then maybe just like, and I mean crazy in the sense of like energetically, like maybe just meditate even for five minutes and set yourself up so that the energy that you have, that the camera as the objective observer will magnify is the kind of energy that you want to put across to the people that are watching you or the people that you serve. Yes. And I will just add one thing to that. You all know around here that I've been going through a tough time over the last month or two, right? And so you you know that about it, right? I've, I've had that honest, authentic, vulnerable conversation with you. However, what I said when we talked about that was that it doesn't matter what I'm going through in my business, in my life. I am still... I, the reason I do what I do is to show up for you, is to help and to be of value and to be of service, as Justin was saying. So, mm. you know, yeah, it's it's a combination of knowing why you're showing up and everything that Justin just shared to get your get yourself in the the right mindset, um, because there's no way in blank that I am going to drag all of that emotional crap into a stream where I'm trying to help you be a bigger, better version of yourself, right? Or help you with your gear or whatever it is, um, because it's not, it, it's not necessary. And so it doesn't provide you with the, the awesomeness that you deserve. So that's my personal thought process on it. Beautiful. All right. Yes. Get real. Love up. Love that. Showing up anyway. You are awesome. You and and I I know that both of us have have had to do that multiple multiple times throughout our careers. So get in the energy zone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Justin, you are freaking awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with us and uh, for dropping those knowledge bombs. Uh, once again, you can get his challenge right here. It, Core Confidence Challenge, Dhaka. <laughs> and uh, Justin, any final words that you want to share? And then we'll, we're going to dance this baby out. So we, we did a little like oh. mini countdown, but we're going to dance Great. this baby out. So everybody get your dancing shoes on while <laughs> Justin says whatever he wants to say to wrap this up. <laughs> you know what? All I can just say is thank you. Thank you, Luria, for providing this service and for being so willing to give of your time and of this beautiful space. Thank you so much, everyone who is watching, who participated here. And just, I'm just humbled to be a part of a group of people who are seeking and who are just continuing to move forward and expand. There's so many people who have, are, are being, feel like they're being crushed yeah. by the contraction that we have gone through in life and in the world in 2020 and here in 2021 as well. But it is people like you, Luria. It is people like all of you who are watching, who are the force that is going to continue to create the expansion in our world, in our lives, in our relationships, in our bodies, and in our businesses that is going to carry us beyond this time uh, of great challenge and into a much beautiful, brighter future. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Let's dance. All right. Let's do Dancing it. shoes yeah. are on, so let's right. do it.